Hey guys, my name is Regan Reese, and today I will be showing you how to optimize your Virtual Sailor for the RMS Titanic mod by Kyle Hudak. Virtual Sailor is a really old game, and it performs like garbage compared to what it, what the graphics have to offer, but with these tips, hopefully, it will perform much better for you. I'm just going to start my Virtual Sailor. I have a fresh copy right now. The only thing I've done is installed the Titanic model and we're just gonna launch it so you can see virtual sailor register version if I go to create cruise and I go to boats you can see everything is pretty much stock except for the RMS Titanic so that's all I've done to this first off we're gonna go to select cruise and I'm going to go to my cruise that I've set up and sail now so this is, um, ex you know, this is exactly what you would see as very first launching the game ever. Um, I am on Virtual Sailor version 7.5, so that's pretty important to note. And up at the corner here, um, we're getting around 50 frames per second. And this is pretty much the lowest graphic setting, almost the lowest graphic setting we can have. But this is about the Titanic, so we're going to launch a Titanic. And I'm not going to fast forward this because it's important to note that when you press select boat, your game doesn't crash. It's actually just loading. Um, but if you click anywhere, like I'll click here, it didn't now, but sometimes it'll say like program not responding or whatever. Just ignore that. It is responding. Windows finds that it's frozen, but it doesn't know that it's actually doing anything with the disk or anything like that and loading the model. And so that was all real time. So now the, the model's loaded. And right now at the top, it's really hard to see with the blue sky, but now we're getting 27 frames per second, which is pretty dang choppy in my book. So here we have the bottle, and we're already seeing some problems. I'm going to have to zoom in on a video editing software, but we already have a bleeding um, interior. So you can see on the stern right here, it's actually bleeding through and all along this deck right here. I think that's the A deck. I'm not sure. Um, so to fix that, we're going to first do our little optimization thing. We're going to start off by hitting these options and video button. And we're going to use the 24-bit depth buffer. And we're just going to hit accept. And as you can notice now, nothing is clipping through. We're getting 35 frames per second now, and the hole is smooth. So now I'll put side by side what was before and what was after, and you can see just how crazy the difference is on the quality of um, everything. What does this do? I'm not exactly sure what it does or what it's for, but I just know that it does this. And actually in the tips of the RMS Titanic, a uh, little file thing it, it actually says it recommends this option because of that very reason um, so first off let's do the um, enable MIP mapping in your graphics option window so how we get to the graphics option window well we go to this little toolkit here and we go to others and we have this MIP mapping and it's actually already enabled so that's fantastic and we can disable it now we're getting 30 frames per second actually 29 so now I will enable it again and now we're getting 30 so actually that's pretty much the same frame rate but we can notice before and after I'll put this on the side of the screen but it's kind of like anti-aliasing if you think about it um, not really but you can see the water is um, a lot more sharper and the decks look crazy especially when I go far away like this but when we enable mip mapping it just kinda smooths everything out and it looks a lot better um, and another thing I'd like to mention is this model has large textures some computers may not be able to handle this and the game may crash upon loading the ship perform at abysmal frame rates or appear for the most part white with many textures failing to appear or may cause other graphical artifacts so right now I'm actually going to do that so I'm just going to get this little close-up right here of the ship and now we are going to load the alternate um, hold textures and I'm actually just going to do this all in real time 
exit. Really want to quit. Yep. Quit Virtual Sailor. And I already have my file directories up right here. So we have the uh, Virtual Sailor directory. And I'm going to go into the alternate hole packs and click on alternate hole textures. And here's a bunch more textures. So now I'm going to go to the boats on Virtual Sailor, RMS Titanic, open this up. I'm going to go into here and do select all, which I don't have actually on that menu. That's no big deal. I'll just press Control A, Control C to copy this. And I'm going to go into this window, Control V. And I do want to replace all the files, 27 of them. And now let's start Virtual Sailor and see what happens. So Virtual Sailor actually didn't save um, my last scene, so hopefully this is kind of close to what we were seeing. But the textures look almost the same, but if you get really close, they're just a little more simpler. Um, especially on the back here. Um, you can see the textures aren't as sharp, which is pretty cool how we get these or this alternate um, option. And on uh, probably other computers, probably not mine, this might do a world of difference in performance. Um, so, more in performance, I think the most important thing, which is actually the dumbest thing at the same time, is the CPU load option. So if I go into graphics, others, we have the CPU load. So I want you to pay attention to the frame rate up here at the top. So right now we're getting 32, 33. Now I'm going to increase the CPU load all the way. And now we're getting 50 frames per second, which is a heck of a lot smoother. So what this CPU load thing is, is it pretty much is like a power saver thing. So if I turn this all the way down to 50%, now we're getting 14 frames per second. And it's horrible. Um, <laughs> it's just super choppy. If you play at this, you might get sick. Um, but basically, it's how much, like if you were on a laptop, this would give you more battery but this would give you more performance. Does that kind of make sense? Um, so CPU load is a very important thing to turn up all the way. And it does the biggest difference ever. And so some more graphics things. So, okay, so some more graphics things to focus on. The water looks like garbage right now. So I'm just gonna go to the graphics again. And we're going to make this water look really good, but without taking performance. Because if I just hit best quality right now, we're getting 16 frames per second. That's on full CPU load, and it looks really good, but it looks or in it perform, but it performs like trash, and we can't have that. So I'm gonna press medium quality, and look at that. Already 30 frames per second, 34. If I look away from the land, it's 42, 40, which is really cool. So I'm going to look at the land because this is what most people are interested in. They want to see the worst case scenario. So here is the Titanic model against the land, um, which takes the most performance. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the reflection here on the sea surface. Wave bump, we're going to turn way down just because it looks a little better and maximal C is going to be off, C mesh nodes all the way up, wave swelling, just really depends on your taste what you want to see. Underwater, we're going to go simple, turn these off, rock size, rock density, or the density, sorry, all the way down. We don't need to see any of that unless we have an underwater scene in maybe our videos. Water turbulence all the way down. Um, and now we're getting 33 frames per second. But you notice the reflections are not catching up at all, especially on the ship. If we look at the the rear of it. Hold on, let me put some waves here. So, looks a little more realistic. Okay. 
So you can see the reflection on the ship is just not keeping up at all. That's an easy fix. We'll just go to the um, other section. And we have sync reflections, which when we turn this on, they sync up, but the frame rate dies. So um, right now with the sync reflections off, it's 30 frames per second with it on. Now we get 22 frames per second. So that's almost 10 frames difference, which is ridiculous. And that's what CP load maxed out. Um, so that's what would what would happen if you needed sync reflections. But if we um, floor the ship right now, full power, and I fast forward it, the sim rate, by pressing F4, we can see so this is normal with the sync reflections off we're still getting 30 frames per second and it doesn't look half bad it only looks bad when we move our camera but again if you need that sync reflections on it just takes a ton of performance away now we're getting 22 with the reflections so now you're asking Reagan what if I don't want reflections I'm glad you asked so I would just turn on the best speed option and that way you get the most performance and it the water still looks pretty good if you have the bump up sorry I closed this if we have the wave bump up a lot um, it looks great if we have maximal C on it looks great but if we turn off maximal C uh, it's not that much performance difference let's see so maximal C off is 40 41 frames per second maximal C on is 37 so that's about a three frames per second difference which isn't that much but at this low anything is great so I would turn maximal C off it just kinda looks like the old virtual sailor days that's pretty much all I would do I would turn underwater visibility to one just because it doesn't really have to render anything down there anymore we also have another option if you're doing a really far away scene this use boat level of detail and pretty much this turns the ship into a 2D image, which I'll have to zoom in on video editing, of the ship. It's just a really basic one, but now we're getting 195 frames per second, and it is butter, butter smooth. But with that level of de detail turned off, now the whole ship is rendered, regardless of what distance I am away, and it's just 50 frames per second, which isn't bad, especially because I'm this far away. But the best thing you can do is just go in the middle of nowhere on your map. So not even on a scenery. Now we're getting 50 frames per second. There is no floor to the sea that is rendered. And there's no land to be rendered. And I'm almost getting 60 frames per second, which is great. And almost, I'm thinking now, if I choose medium quality with that reflection on, I'm still getting 45 frames per second. And if I turn the water bump down, or th sorry, the wave bump down, I get more of a realistic reflection. Of course, the sync reflection isn't turned on. Whoops, wrong button. But if I turn it on now, it looks great. And still, 30 frames per second, about. And 30 frames per second for a video really isn't that big of a deal, especially on a model like this, where it's just water and a ship. It looks great in all of your videos and when you play the game. So, I think that's pretty much it for this episode of Optimizing Your Virtual Sailor. Uh, I should have a lot more Virtual Sailor videos coming out where I do tips like what all the graphics settings do and you know just a bunch of tips that people don't really know and I do enjoy making these virtual sailor videos I'm glad that they are successful and that's what keeps me doing them so anyway I'm glad that you watched this all the way through sorry this is a pretty long video but I try to get as much information in as little times as possible um, I will have a video of the ver of the Titanic of all the options available like what all the different interiors look like what the lighting looks like a bunch of stuff all the facts about virtual sailor titanic which is really cool 
and should help you in your videos or any other activity you might do with this ship. So in conclusion, um, the Virtual Sailor Titanic is a great model. The Virtual Sailor game is a very old game and hopefully these tips helped you out in making it run a lot smoother because this ship is huge and it is incredibly detailed and the game just doesn't really have the engine in it to present the detail efficiently so anyway this conclusion has been too long but I appreciate your your views I appreciate your likes I appreciate your comments and I will see you in the next video thank you